What is playing games in VR with a 3060 Ti like? Can you max out the settings? Or do you need to be more conservative? Well, the quick answer to that question is, it depends on the game. In this video, we'll be taking a look at nine different VR games to see what kind of performance we can get with a 3060 Ti. For these tests, I'm using a Zotac RTX 3060 Ti Twin Edge OC and have paired it with a Ryzen 7 5800X CPU and 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance 3600 MHz CL16 DDR4 RAM. And first up on our list, we'll be taking a look at my personal favorite VR shooter, Contractors. Contractors is a pretty fast paced game and luckily the 3060 Ti is a pretty fast GPU. In this game, I was able to max out the render resolution in the Oculus PC app at 5408 by 2736 and set the refresh rate of my Quest 2 to 120 Hz. In Contractors, I set all the in-game graphics settings to high, except for anti-aliasing, which I set to low. I started out playing around in some old Call of Duty maps, and as you can see from our performance graphs, the 3060 Ti didn't even bat an eye at these settings. It had no problem maintaining a 120 FPS frame rate with plenty of performance headroom to spare. When I switched over to Parking Lot, uh, one of Contractor's built-in maps, our available performance headroom tightened up a bit. There are some areas on this map that have more complex lighting and shadow effects going on, which pushed the 3060 Ti right to its limits at the settings I was using. In this particular moment, the FPS graph shows our frame rate dropping all the way down to 60 FPS for a bit. This isn't because that's all the better the 3060 Ti could do in this instance. That's just how the compositor works to help keep frame times consistent so the experience remains smooth. And in this instance, things work exactly as they're supposed to and I didn't notice the drop in frame rate at all while I was playing. To prevent this from happening, you could easily reduce the render resolution to something like 4704 by 2384 or simply lower the refresh rate in the Oculus app to 90 Hz. But for this test, I wanted to see just how far we could push the 3060 Ti. And as you can see, it can play this game quite well at 120 Hz. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is one of VR's more popular titles, but is also a bit more demanding than Contractors. I like to keep the resolution high because I hate seeing jaggies in VR. So for this game, I set the render resolution of the Quest 2 to 4704 by 2384 and the refresh rate to 72 Hz as I felt 90 Hz was a little too high at the settings I decided to go with. In the game's video settings, I set the pixel density to 120% and everything else to ultra except for anti-aliasing which I turned off. While wandering through the cemetery, the frame rate was solid, and the 3060 Ti still had a good amount of performance headroom available. I saw much the same thing while wandering this neighborhood, and it was because of this great performance that I thought about turning up the refresh rate of my Quest 2 to 90 Hz. What stopped me though was when I'd fight with walkers. The performance headroom would drop pretty significantly, as you can see in this clip here. That being said, at these settings, this game looks fantastic, and the 3060 Ti delivers a solid experience. Beat Saber is really just a gimme, as it's not a very demanding game at all, but it is super popular, so I threw it in just so you'll know how the 3060 Ti performs in this one. Like I did with Contractors, I set the Oculus render resolution to 5408 by 2736 and the refresh rate to 120 Hz. In the in-game graphics settings, I was able to set the render scale to 1.5 and all the other settings to their maximum values, except for anti-aliasing, which I turned off. At these settings, the 3060 Ti gave us great performance in Beat Saber. The frame rate never fell below 120 FPS, and as you can see on the graph, we had a good amount of performance headroom left, which is exactly what you want to see. One of my favorite games to come out this year is Red Matter 2. If you like puzzle games with good narratives, you're not going to want to miss this one. As for the settings I tested this game at with the 3060 Ti, Sasha, I set the Oculus me? render resolution to 4704 by 2384 yes. and yeah. the refresh rate yeah. to 90 Hz. 
In the game, I set the resolution scale to 1.3 and turned indirect and dynamic shadows on. The headaches. Going into this test, I thought I might have to turn the refresh rate of my headset down to 72 hertz with the settings this high, but the 3060 Ti held in there like a champ. There were times when the performance headroom was teetering on the edge and the frame rate did dip below 90 FPS a little like you see here, but this was usually very brief and overall performance was great. Red Matter 2 is a visually stunning game and the 3060 Ti has just enough oomph to deliver outstanding visuals in this game and a top notch experience. The only driving game I currently own is Assetto Corsa. It's an older title and was originally developed as a flat screen game, but later got VR support. And driving in VR is just awesome, in my opinion. So how did the 3060 Ti fare? I played around for quite a while with different settings, but in the end, to keep the graphics looking fairly sharp, I went with a render resolution of 4704 by 2384 but had to set the refresh rate to 72 hertz. Originally being a flat screen game, it has kind of a lot of graphics options when compared to most VR only games. But here's what I settled on. I set the in-game resolution to 2560 by 1440, the rendering mode to open VR, anisotropic filtering to 16x, anti-aliasing samples to off, world detail to minimum, and shadow resolution to low. All the reflection settings I set to their maximum value, and I left the post-processing effects at their defaults. It was at these settings I was finally able to keep the frame rate above 72 FPS all the time, which is really important for this game. Things tend to get a bit choppy when the frame rate drops below that mark, which in VR does not make for a comfortable experience. Microsoft Flight Simulator is the most difficult game to run in VR that I know of. So going into this, I knew I was going to have to keep the settings turned down pretty low. I set the render resolution as low as the Oculus app goes, which is 2432 by 1216, and the refresh rate to 72 hertz. In the VR graphics settings in Flight Simulator, I turned anti-aliasing off, left the render scaling at 100, turned the world scale down to 80, the level of terrain detail to 75, objects level of detail to 100, and set all other settings to their lowest value, or just turn them off if that option was available. Using these settings, the 3060 Ti was able to give us a pretty consistent frame rate right around 72 FPS when I was doing the training flights over Sedona, Arizona. When I changed locations though and did a flight over New York City, the frame rate tended to fluctuate a lot more. Thanks to how the compositor works, even with these pretty dramatic frame rate fluctuations, the frame time stayed pretty consistent, and while I could tell the frame rate was low, the motion was at least fairly smooth. To be fair, even top of the line hardware struggles with Flight Simulator because there is just so much stuff for the CPU to process and for the GPU to draw. Most all the guys I've seen playing Flight Simulator in VR are using top of the line rigs and still have to play it between 30 and 45 FPS while using highly customized settings. And because Flight Simulator isn't a super fast paced game, you can get away with the frame rate being low like this without it negatively impacting the experience all that much. Switching over to a game the 3060 Ti fared a bit better with, Bone Lab is probably one of the most popular games to be recently released. I found the 3060 Ti ran this game quite well at 4704 by 2384 at 72 hertz. As for the game settings, I first went to the high graphical preset and then turned MSAA down to 1x and disabled SMAA. All the other settings I left at whatever their default value was from the high preset. Depending on what all was going on, the performance headroom did vary a fair amount in this game, but using these settings, the 3060 Ti kept us at a nearly perfect 72 FPS. Personally, I don't find Bone Lab to be all that impressive looking of a game when it comes to the graphics, but that being said, uh, at these settings, using the 3060 Ti, the game looks sharp and plays very nicely. 
next up we have what I feel is one of the best looking games currently available for VR. Lone Echo 2. It took me a bit more time to dial this one in than it did with some of the other games, but in the end I went with my go-to resolution of 4704 by 2384 and a refresh rate of 72 hertz. In the game's graphic settings, I used the medium quality preset, which still looks amazing, by the way. Left the resolution scale at 100%, turned multi-sample anti-aliasing to none, and temporal AA off. This pushed the 3060 Ti right to the bleeding edge, leaving us with pretty much no performance headroom to spare. But even though we were right on the edge, the game ran great at these settings and looked amazing. One problem I ran into in this game that I didn't encounter in any of the others I tested was textures sometimes taking a really long time to load or simply not loading at all. Here's an example where it took a long time for the textures to load in. As I was going through this airlock, the texture on the doors looked all blurry and muddy, uh, but then all of a sudden, popped in. And then again, once I was through the airlock, the textures on the cargo containers over here did not load. I had a suspicion we were maxing out our VRAM in these instances, so I fired up MSI Afterburner to monitor VRAM usage, and was able to confirm that all 8 gigabytes of VRAM on the 3060Ti were being fully utilized at these times. While it can be a little immersion breaking, textures not loading in isn't the end of the world. Other than that, the 3060Ti performed really, really well on this game. For those that want to avoid this problem though, you're going to want to pass on the 3060Ti and get a different card with more VRAM. And now for the game you've probably been waiting for, Half-Life Alex. Just like with pretty much every other game I tested, I set the render resolution to 4704 by 2384 and the refresh rate to 72 Hz. Using the high fidelity performance preset in Half-Life Alex, the 3060 Ti was able to give a solid 72 FPS with just enough performance headroom still available to give us a nice cushion from when we wandered into areas that were slightly more difficult to render. At these settings, Half-Life Alex looks amazing and runs really nicely as well. So what are your thoughts on the VR performance of the 3060 Ti? Did it meet your expectations, or did it fall a bit short? Perhaps you're wanting something with similar performance, but want more than 8GB of VRAM. Then you'll want to check out this video of the RX 6700 XT. It has 12GB of VRAM, and as of the making of this video, can be picked up pretty easily for cheaper than most 3060 Ti's out there.